<clears throat> All right, we're ready, boys. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Full Fishing Channel. Today is September 26th, 2019. It is going to be my outing number 144 of this year, and it is day two down here in Fort Myers, Miami. We're still fishing the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if you haven't checked the previous video in the series yet, you really need to go there because yesterday was a phenomenal day, right? So I'm going to link that above, all right? Go and check it out. I kind of worked a little bit on the fish IDs from yesterday and I actually ended up landing four new species of fish, okay? I left all the details on Instagram, how to identify properly and everything like that. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys a brief summary over here. So we added yesterday the Gulf Kingfish. That was the species number 149 for me. I ended up identifying that grouper at the end of the video as a red grouper. That it was a species what, 250, right? Oh man, a fish just jumped back there. And then there was that little mohara that turned out to be a tidewater mohara, a species 251. And there was that silver side that turned out to be a tidewater silver side, which was a species 252. So, I mean, the Gulf has been treating me pretty darn well so far. Big Carlos really provided, which is why today we are here at its sun. <laughs> That's damn right. The name of this place is actually Little Carlos Pass. I don't know who named these things over here, okay? But there we have it. Yesterday we fished the Big Carlos Pass. You see all this bait fish over here? Could be the green or the white, right? As the Floridians call them. It is looking beautiful. Now, this pass over here is different than the other one in a sense that it is much narrower. And this is a pass that we leads to the back bay. We were fishing, really, the connection of the Gulf of Mexico yesterday, right, with the pass. Now, we're fishing the pass, another pass, to the bay. Well, it is looking like it is going to be very productive because we're fishing right next to a bridge. There's plenty of structure. There's plenty of sandy flats, right? Not to mention that you just never know when we're going to have blitzes around here, right? If the Spanish mackerel pass again, I may switch to some lures. If some other species pass, we may do some lure fishing. So anything is possible today. Man, a fish just jumped again right next to me. Let me get the gear set up for my father and my mother. Let the multi-species begin. And hopefully a bunch of new species are going to show up in this video, all right? Stay tuned. I'm a Got one. All right, that was that was fast and easy. I'm trying to catch some live bait fish right now. We're going to live line some fish today. I'm going to live line for my parents. But more importantly, I want to actually properly identify these bait fish that are down here. You see, there are different types of these little bait fish in Florida. Anglers always refer to them as white bait, green bait, whatever bait, you know but they don't really know what they, what they are, right? False pilchard, scale sardine, thread fin, herring, right? Red ear, uh, sardine. They really don't have no idea. So I'm going to take some mouth photos of this guy. We're going to properly identify in this video today and see if I can finally add a few of these bait fish to my species list. Okay, I just took a few shots of this fella right here, including the inside of the mouth. But you know what? I ain't gonna lie. It was pretty hard to take the shots of the inside of the mouth. <laughs> I'm going to identify all of them later when I go back to Philadelphia. For now, I'm just going to live line this dude here and I'm going to call it bait fish number one in this video, okay? That's interesting. I've been chasing this little school of fish right over here. You guys can see right this school right over here for quite a while and they actually don't bite on anything i don't know what species that is as a matter of fact i've been using a size 18 hook maybe i will try a tanago later they're just different but i have no clue what they are oh my goodness oh 
got him. Another one. There we go. Bait fish number two. And I'm gonna keep catching in and catching in until I can properly identify them. I'm gonna keep taking photos of the inside of the mouth, man, until I can properly distinguish between the scale sardine and the false pilchard. Yeah, look at that, huh? Oh, dang. Very nice, man. The other thing about having a photo tank, you can just have your little live fish all in here. I'm just gonna hook this one through the back, man, and just let it swim freely down there. All the scales on this one are actually pretty rough. Okay, there we have it. Awesome. Opa! Sumatons here! What is that? Oh, what rains? This one's a little pink fish. That's a new species from my mom, the Lagodon homboides. Okay, my mom says she's gonna turn this pink fish into bait, <laughs> and I definitely do not regret it. Beautiful little pink fish, but awesome bait. So, you know what? Yeah, let's turn it into bait. My mom got a fish on the pink fish. Dude, she's got a, one of the live pink fish. We've been using live bait over here. Nice. Oh, it's a catfish. It's a big ass gift up sale catfish. Don't you see? Calma, rapaz, calma. Okay, dang, dude, bagri. Okay, don't you see? Bagri. Gift up sale nailed the pink fish, bro. God damn! I mean, the fight was good. Varda Hall. Oh, okay. She said it was a great fight, but it was a damn gas top sale catfish, son. Owned the whole pink fish. All righty, we got here a uh, gas top sale catfish. What was the scientific name? Bagri Marinus, right? Who is actually very pissed right now. Easy, easy. I'm just gonna open the leaper real quickly over here and uh, release this fella here. The thing about these fish is that you have to be very, very careful with the fins. Dorsal fin, uh, you know, the pectoral fin. Man, it can hurt you pretty bad. Uh, anyways, so let's put another live fish. And hopefully the next one that is going to show up is going to be <laughs> a game fish. Oh, hit by the third piling. Yeah, getting hit by the third piling. It's on. Fish by the third piling. I'm kind of trying to look for rocks. This place is like all sand. What we got here? It's a lane snapper. Oh my goodness, I got the curse of the lane snapper. I'm telling you, everywhere I go now, doesn't matter if it is Miami, the Gulf, the, the lanes, Latin snappers are always following me. Dang, son. Slutiano Sinagres. Boy, these fish are certainly beautiful. But I've caught so many of them recently that I never want to see one of these again. The lane snapper is certainly a beautiful species, but for real. Nossa, com a gorla. Essa chesa. Nossa, chama bem aí. Rapaz. Nossa, this is wow. O que alguém já ouviu de isso? Você tinha isso aqui algo de um tom assim? Isso é uma. It's a star, sea star. Dang, dude. This is the first time. Yo, I hook it in the mouth, didn't I? Yeah, dude. It really got my cut bait. I can't believe it. It got my cut bait. This is this is in the in the mouth of the beast. This is indeed very interesting. All right, let me get the hook out of this thing. Ah, it had my, oh, it had my cut bait. It took my cut bait. Look at that. It's okay. You can have your free meal, okay? 
He took my cut bait, dude. This is my cut, cut fish right here, dude. Wow, bro, this is fascinating. I've caught many different things in my life before, but like I told you guys, this is my first time ever catching one of these, man. I, th I thought it was an egg, you know? I thought that maybe, I don't know, I thought that maybe I had a, I had a crab on or something. Let me see, maybe it's gonna attach itself to the wall here. How, how exactly does this thing work? I don't know, man. Is, is it still alive? It, it must be alive, right? Oh yeah, it's alive, it's alive. Okay, the little tentacles are moving and stuff. Okay, let me just release it like that and I guess it's just gonna float to the bottom. I mean, sink to the, float to the bottom. It's gonna sink to the bottom and then the beast is just gonna start walking again, I guess. I don't know. Very exotic creature, man. I can still see it all the way down. Wow, my dad got a fish on the shrimp. Is that a kingfish? <laughs> I think it's a kingfish. A golf kingfish. Let's see, what kind of fish? He said it is the fish that tastes good. Oh, wait a moment. That is not the golf one. What kind of fish? That is just a regular, that is just a regular southern kingfish. Yeah, that's a southern kingfish, the mentecijos. Americanos is not the Gulf. The Gulf has the black here on top, as you guys saw in the previous video. So that is indeed another species for our trip. Yeah, this is a southern kingfish. It's got very weird markings, like cone-like. You see what I'm saying? But it is definitely not a Gulf. I'm gonna save this guy as cut bait. We're in need of cut bait anyway, so my dad just did us a favor. We're gonna keep throwing some live bait and some cut bait down there and see what else is around, son. Nossa, rapaz! Oi, oh, easy, easy, nossa! Ok, ok! Wow, man! Ok, ok, ok! <laughs> oh man, that's that's the hook. Let me tell you something, man. I've seen my father give some savage hook sets before. <laughs> this right here, man, the things that you do for the fish, you know. A whole shrimp is probably a whiting. I would assume so. Let's see what we got. What we yeah, it's a little. Oh no, check that out. It's a catfish. Uh, he hooked Mike Long style on the side, son. That's the worst part, it's a hard head. What about the, what about the fauna? Huh? Oh, okay. the fauna. All right, this one here definitely does not count. This one here was actually full hooked on the side. Poor hard head catfish was probably taking a swim down there, dude. Yo, that hook set, yo, brutal. Oh, got a hit already. There's one, there's one. I don't think this is a lane snapper. I do not think this is a lane snapper, dude. That was a nice pull. Let's see what we got here. I think it's something different. Yeah, what we got? That's another species, son. It's a pig fish. Okay, I already have the pig fish on my species list. But regardless, this is a new species for our fishing trip right here. <laughs> it's a type of grunt that didn't even show up last time when we were in Miami. Beautiful, all right. This is phenomenal. We got here the big fish, the Orthopristis chrysoptera. Not to be confused with our pork fish, right? The Anisotremus virginicus. But yeah, look at that. This one also grunts, right? It grunts like a pig. Beautiful little specimen over here. First one of the strip. Caught right by the second piling over there. He tiny man, come on. Can do better than that. It's on. There we go. Got him, yeah. I don't think it's a lane snapper this time. Should be something a little bit different. Is it another pig fish? Yeah, it's another pig fish. Yeah, look at that, man. Orthopristis 
Chrysoptera, beautiful. I just took a shot of the last one, so I don't need to take a photo of this one now. Beautiful sample, fight really well. Good eating too. Beautiful grunt. Wow, dude. I just saw my father give a wild hook set. You see, now he's just down. He doesn't stand anymore, man, because he knows. What's up, Xiaomi? Meio. Oh, he said zone. Last time when he fell, man, he said it's very small. <laughs> okay, well, we'll find out what it is, you know, man. Maybe something new for today, right? Yeah, hardhead catfish. Oh, calma, irmão. Yeah, see, now it's hooked in the mouth. We can actually count the species for today, right? The last one was nagged, but this one, Ariopsis felis, is in the mouth. So we got to take a shot, a proper shot at this guy. Okay, my father said be very careful. Oh, believe me, I know it. With a hardhead catfish, you do not want to get spined by the dorsal or the pectoral fins. You have to be very, very careful, my man. So let me do a quick unhook here. We just took shot of the shots of this fish. I do not want to hurt myself. This is how I hold it. You see what I'm saying? And then just release it, just like that. So you don't hurt yourself. The tide is pretty low right now. I have been fishing the whole afternoon here with my mom and my dad right by this bridge. As you guys can see, the tide is so low right now that some of the rocks here are exposed. I think that I'm going to use my last 15 minutes of fishing here, just kind of throwing a small hook along these rocks to see if there's anything new, right? Maybe we're going to, I don't know, come across something exotic living in the rocks or hiding in the rocks because it is almost time for us to leave today. So yeah, let's do that. Dude, what we got here, it's something different, isn't it? Yes! Finally something different. Been punching these rocks over here for a good, good while, my man. It's some kind of, it's some kind of killifish. fish. What is this? Are you telling me that I work this hard just for a regular mummy chog? This can't be, no, this has to be something different, right? Let, let's analyze it. I ain't even gonna lie to you guys. I don't even know if the range of the mummy chog, the Fundulus heteroclitus, extends to the Gulf of Mexico. But this right here, my friends, this ain't no mummy chog. No way, 100%. This is something different. I am thinking this is really a Gulf killifish. I am going to uh, make sure later. So let me just release it over here. I took enough photos of it. It definitely got orange markings on its anal fin okay oh my goodness dude my dad got a big ass blue crab you know what let me release this guy over here this may be potentially a new species okay the gulf killifish now let me go take care of that crab dang bro this is one of the biggest ass blue crabs that i have seen in a good while let's put it on the ground here it's inside its claw. There we go, there we go. I think I got it, I think I got it. I think I got it. Take it easy, buddy. Yes, you're free. <laughs> it took a fall, but it's fine. That was a big ass blue crab. If I had a kitchen down here, mm -mm, that blue crab is not going back, man. Not going back. You know, folks, every time I go traveling sometimes with my family or sometimes just myself you probably have realized this already right uh, if you watch the youtube videos here on the channel i always choose these fishing spots that i have never fished at before in other words i mean you guys get to see the whole experience here on youtube right and the whole species showing up one after another and things like that but to tell the truth every time i come to these fishing spots it is my first time ever. I don't really know which species are around. You know what I'm saying? I have to figure out the whole thing. I don't know where are the deep holes, where is the structure, where are the honey holes. I don't know if there are going to be blitzes here, if big fish pass by or even exist 
around this area so taking all of that into consideration i would say that today second day down here in the gulf of mexico was a great day sure i didn't catch like four new lifers like yesterday at the big carlos pass right but even so a lot of species showed up in this video right i didn't really count but I think we caught like what more than 10 different species of fish and at the end of the video just now right a few minutes ago i caught the gold killifish which was a new species for me 253 so you know what i can't really complain i got one day left down here at the gulf of mexico i'm going to pick another spot take my parents there and hopefully we're going to land a few other different species of fish there are plenty of species out there that I have not yet added to my life list, right? Today, for a good part, you guys didn't get to see in this video, we live lined, you know, the little uh, false pilchards here trying to catch some bigger fish and that didn't happen. For another part of the video, you guys also didn't get to see, I, I tried to get the gulf toadfish, the Opsanus beta that my mom got yesterday and I failed miserably at that. So, you know, hopefully tomorrow is going to be a good day. We gotta get some dinner now. Get, get some sleep and then tomorrow i'm gonna be energized for another multi-species day of fishing all right this is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it tight lines and take it easy folks dude these are the struggles i'm not having a net on the pier i mean i don't even know if you're supposed to if you can take this fish out of the water. I don't think you can, because this is an endangered species. So I'm going to try my best to take good care of it. I'm going to land it by the little private land over here. I don't know if the restaurant will allow me to do that. I certainly hope so, because, you know, I really want to take good care of this guy and land it in the water.